is the day that Syrians living in those hills are supposed to finally get their reprieve, the cessation of hostilities, the ceasefire being timed with the beginning of Eid. That's important symbolically, but they are by no means after the symbolism. They want the reality of some quiet, of the humanitarian aid corridor opening, of negotiations beginning. They have enormous doubts that any of that will actually happen, though. Relatively speaking, compared with the rest of Syria, these hills have been incredibly quiet, except that's changed in the last 72 hours. Even from the vantage point of the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, if you stop and listen, you can actually hear the bombardments that have only been accelerating in the hours leading up to the ceasefire. What's happening is that both the Syrian forces and the rebel forces are trying to grab and hold whatever territory they can while they can. If you just look a few kilometers away, you can see the fighters from Fatah al-Sham, which is a group that used to be called Jabhat al-Nusra, affiliated with al-Qaeda, moving through the hills. So certainly there's an offensive underway. It's more activity here than there has been in the last six months to a year. But what's happening here is nothing compared to the madness of what's been going on in the run-up to the ceasefire deeper into Syria, in Aleppo, in Douma, in Idlib. People shopping for the Eid hit repeatedly by airstrikes. They know that the ceasefire, the time before the ceasefire, is the most dangerous. The biggest concerns seem to be who is going to enforce this ceasefire and how. There are concerns that no one seems to understand exactly how Russia will convince Syria not to attack, and no one's quite clear what levers the United States will use with the rebel groups to keep them supposedly in line.